scientists have always searched for patterns, regularities, and symmetries in nature. If a pattern can be discovered, information and data can be arranged and organized in ways that will make it more understandable, meaningful, and useful. An excellent example of this is the periodic table of elements. In grade 7, you have learned about the periodic table. The elements, the building blocks of matter, are listed in that table. On this video lesson, we will trace the development of the periodic table and we will describe the arrangement of elements in the periodic table. Let us have a review of what we have learned last time. We have here the shorthand notation for the element copper. What is the atomic number of copper? If your answer is 29, then you are correct. Next, we have iron. What is the mass number of iron? If your answer is 56, then you are correct. We have here the shortened notation for the elements aluminum, lithium, and hydrogen. Which element has the lowest atomic number? The element with the lowest atomic number is hydrogen. Its atomic number is 1. How many neutrons are there in the atom of lithium? If your answer is 4, then you are correct. Lithium's atomic mass is 7. Because we round off 6.941 to 7. Then the number of proton is 3. So we have 7 minus 3 is equal to 4. On this video lesson, we will talk about the development of the periodic table of elements. Specifically, we will use the periodic table to predict the chemical behavior of an element. We will trace the development of periodic table and we will describe the main features of periodic table. The study of each element is not a simple job. However, scientists thought of a way to make it easier. It was in 1803 when English chemist physicist John Dalton started the use of symbols in representing the atoms of different elements. As you can see in the figure, elements were presented differently from the ones we are using today. Notice that the symbols for iron and silver are I and S, respectively. Dalton also assigned the relative weights of the elements with hydrogen as the lightest and mercury as the heaviest. The origin of the chemical names and symbols. Alchemy refers to both an early form of the investigation of nature and early philosophical and spiritual disciplines. Alchemists were known in different aspects and one of these is their popular culture process of changing some elements into gold. They were the first to introduce the symbols of the elements in the Middle Ages. They preserved their work with confidentiality through the use of symbols. They also made use of symbols for the elements. This practice of using symbols has influenced modern chemists and helped them to work easily with the elements. Modern chemists use symbols for each element to facilitate writing and for convenience. They assign each element with unique symbols. Each element's symbol has a different origin. Some element symbols are either the initial letter of the element or a combination of the first or another letter from the Latin or English name of the elements. This system of chemical symbols was invented by John Jacob Berzelius. Aside from Latin and English names, some elements, names, and symbols were derived from the scientists or discoverers' names, countries, or places where it was discovered, the 
mythology, planets, its Greek and German names, colors, etc. Majority of the elements in the periodic table have symbols consisting of two letters with the first letter capitalized. As the chemists discovered more elements, they began to observe the arrangement of each element through patterns in their properties. These patterns helped the chemists decipher the elements better. Chemists were not satisfied with the use of symbols for each element. They tried to arrange the elements. The arrangement of elements in patterns paved the way to the tabulation of the elements according to its chemical and physical properties suitably called periodic table of elements. As with other discoveries, the periodic table also underwent some modifications before it was finalized. Its evolution was made possible by different chemists. As we proceed with the lesson, let us get to know the scientists who contributed and spent time and efforts to the development of the periodic table. In 1789, Antoine Lagoucher, a French physicist chemist, published a book that contained the classification of elements based on their similar properties. He arranged the list of his 33 elements into four categories, such as acid-making elements, gas-like elements, metallic elements, and earthy elements. Unfortunately, Lavoche's work did not progress until his death. In 1817, Johann Wolfgang de Bereiner, a German chemist, studied three elements and noticed similarities among the properties of metals such as calcium, barium, and strontium. He continued to study another group of three elements. He called these groups triads. He noted similarities in the three elements chlorine, bromine, and iodine. The Brainer predicted that there is a closeness among the atomic masses, traditionally called atomic weight, of the set elements. Lithium's atomic mass is 7, sodium is 23, and potassium is 39. If we are going to add the atomic masses of lithium, which is 7, and potassium, which is 39, and divide it by 2, you will get the atomic mass of the element sodium. He concluded that the atomic mass and the density of the middle element in each triad is approximate average of the atomic mass and densities of the first and the third elements. Attempts were made to arrange the elements into triads in 1850. Nevertheless, more reliable measurements were introduced and speculations on the atomic mass of the middle element became less accurate. In 1863, Alexander Emile Begayer de Charcantois had the idea to plot the elements in a spiral around the surface of the cylinder divided into 16 vertical sections according to the element's atomic masses. He arranged the elements in the order of their atomic weights along a helix which was traced on the surface of a vertical cylinder with an angle of 45 degrees to its axis. In every single strip, Elements with the same physical and chemical properties were grouped together. He called this device telluric helix. He stated from the results of his experiments that the properties of elements are the same as the properties of numbers. His idea seemed tenable enough at first, but failed to muster support and died a natural death. Although the Berener's triads proved to be insignificant and uh, the Chantatois idea did not gain support at that time, 
These were used as bases for seeking further classification of elements. In 1869, Jan Newlands, an English chemist, presented another way of classifying elements. He arranged all the elements known at that time in order of their atomic masses, beginning with lithium, and noted that the eighth element has similar properties to the first element, the ninth to the second, and the tenth to the third, and so on. He compared their relationship to the octaves of musical notes. He then called this pattern the law of octaves. When he did this, he found that each element was similar to the element 8 places further on. For example, starting at lithium, beryllium is the second element. Boron is the third and sodium is the eighth element. In the presentation of Newland's octaves, the elements were arranged in order of increasing atomic masses. It worked only for the first 16 elements. Because of that, and the way he related his work to musical notes, his idea was ridiculed and rejected by some chemists at that time. However, his idea of repetition of similar properties served as the beginning of the periodic table of elements. In 1869, Russian chemist Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev and German chemist Julius Lothar Mayer, working independently, presented closely identical versions of arranging the elements based on their increasing atomic masses. It is a more detailed tabulation of the elements based on their periodic properties. Both scientists proposed the periodic law, which states that the properties of elements are periodic functions of their atomic masses. But Mendeleev is usually given more credit than Mayer for publishing his work earlier and for successfully demonstrating the value of his table. He examined the properties of the known elements by using a set of cards. In separate cards, the properties of elements were tabulated. He arranged and rearranged these cards until he realized that certain properties were repeated several times when the cards were arranged on the basis of increasing atomic masses. Like new lands, he noticed a periodic repetition of the elements when he arranged them. Then, he arranged them in a table. His work became the basis for the system used today called periodic table, the Mendeleev's periodic table, and the Meyer's periodic property graph. Periodic law was developed independently by Dmitry Mendeleev and Lothar Meyer in 1869. Mendeleev created the first periodic table and were shortly followed by Meyer. They both arranged the elements by their mass and proposed that certain properties periodically reoccur. Meyer formed this periodic law based on the atomic volume or molar volume, which is the atomic mass divided by the density in solid form. Mendeleev's table is noteworthy because it exhibits mostly accurate values for atomic mass and it also contains blank spaces for unknown elements. Mendeleev built his table with elements arranged in horizontal row from left to right in order of increasing atomic masses. A new element with properties similar to the one already in a row started a new row. In this manner, the elements with similar properties fell in one column. Mendeleev focused on the proper placement of the elements in the table. This is the most important feature of this table, wherein he deliberately left empty spaces left for the yet-to-be-discovered elements at that time. 
and he made predictions about their properties like color, density, melting point, and atomic mass. Surprisingly, Julius Luther Meyer had also developed a very similar table in the same year, yet these two scientists neither knew nor met each other. The predictive value of Mendeleev's table and his nearly accurate predictions of the existence of yet undiscovered elements and their expected properties had made him more popular than Meyer, and his table led to its wide acceptance. On the other hand, Meyer prepared a graph showing the periodic properties of elements. He based his work to the physical properties of elements as a function of their atomic weights. Between 1893 and 1898, Sir William Ramsey, John Strutt, or Lord Rayleigh, and Maurice Travers made a research not related to the periodic table and worked together to find out if there are unidentified elements existing in the atmosphere. In 1894, Ramsey and Rayleigh isolated argon from atmospheric nitrogen. Argon, the first noble gas, came from the Greek word argos, meaning the lazy one. In 1895, Ramsey discovered the inert gas helium, derived from the Greek word helios, meaning sun. Later on, Ramsey and Traverse discovered more gases such as krypton, which means hidden, neon, which means new, and xenon means stranger. Some studies have shown that there are observed irregularities in Mendeleev's work. Some of his work violated the periodic law. The periodic law and its classification, according to increasing atomic masses, caused several elements to be placed in the table incorrectly. This led the scientists to think that there must be another basis aside from the atomic masses that will prove the similarities in the properties of elements. In 1913, English physicist Henry Mosley suggested that atomic mass is not the property that governs periodicity. A discovery he got from his experiments on the X-ray emission spectra. He observed that the frequencies of X-ray emitted from atoms of elements were correlated with the sizes of their nuclear charges. He assigned a whole number to the size of the nuclear charge of an atom and called this atomic number. He discovered that the atomic number differs from the preceding element in the table. His work becomes a significant discovery to the development of the periodic table because he was able to solve the irregularities in Mendeleev's periodic table. Mosley concluded that it is better to explain the trends in Mendeleev's table if the elements were arranged according to increasing atomic number. His discovery revealed the true basis of the periodic table and enabled Mosley to predict confidently the existence of four new chemical elements, all of which were found. The periodic law was restated as the properties of elements are periodic functions of their atomic numbers. Looking at the world, you find an overwhelming number of different substances. To bring order in a somewhat disorganized system, 19th century chemists developed the periodic table by arranging elements in increasing order of atomic masses. Discrepancies in early versions of the periodic table were resolved by arranging elements in order of increasing atomic number. At this point, let us discuss the main features of the periodic table. After a series of revisions, the early periodic table was evolved into what it is now. By looking at the modern periodic table, we can see that the elements are arranged horizontally in order of increasing atomic numbers. Each element is identified by its symbols placed at the middle of the square. The atomic number and the atomic mass are also included. 
elements in the modern periodic table are arranged in seven periods. So we have period 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Horizontal rows are called periods and vertical columns are called groups. The elements in each column have similar chemical properties due to their similarities in the number of electrons in their outer shells or in their highest principal energy level. The periodic table has 18 vertical columns. The elements in a group are also classified into two categories, such as family A or the representative elements and family B or the transition metals. This arrangement allows us to study systematically the way properties vary with the element's position in the table. Similarities and differences among the elements are easier to understand and remember. The periods. Notice that the periodic table consists of several horizontal rows called periods or series. There are seven periods which are designated as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. The elements belonging to the same period have different properties. The periods can be described as follows. Period 1 has two elements, hydrogen and helium. Periods 2 and 3, lithium through neon and sodium through argon. Period 4 and 5, from potassium through krypton, from rubidium, through Sinon, period 6 has 32 elements to make this period fit the 18-member maximum arrangement of elements. The 14 elements from atomic numbers 58 to 71 are removed and placed at the bottom of the table to form the lanthanide series. Period 7 also includes 14 elements from atomic number 90 through 103, which were placed at the bottom part of the table to form the actinide series. This period is still incomplete, waiting for some more elements to be discovered. The last two periods are called inner transition elements. The lanthanide series is then called the rare earth elements, and the actinide series, the heavy rare earth elements. Elements are classified as metals if their outer energy levels have 3 or less electrons, while those with 5 electrons or more are non-metals. Metallic property is the ability of atoms to lose electrons, while the non-metallic property is the ability of atoms to gain or accept electrons. The trend is described based on the electron configuration of the element. The most metallic elements are found to the left and to the bottom of the periodic table. In general, the metallic property is greater for larger atoms. From left to right, we have decreasing metallic property, while from top to bottom, we have increasing metallic property. Metals tend to lose electrons and form positively charged ions called cations while non-metals tend to gain electrons and form negatively charged ions called anions. So let's sum up what we have learned today. The periodic table was developed as a result of years of painstaking work by different scientists. Its present form was a result of meticulous and thorough study by scientists. The modern periodic table arranges horizontally the elements in the order of increasing atomic numbers. Elements are grouped based on their properties. Each element is identified by its symbols placed at the middle of the square. The atomic number and the atomic mass are also included. At this point, let us check your understanding. For the first part of our quiz, let us have matchy-matchy. So match column A with column B. So, on the first column, we have the name of the scientists, and uh, on uh, the right column, we have their contribution on the development of periodic table. The answer will be flashed at the end of this video. For the next part of our quiz, number one, Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev 
A created the periodic table, B discovered the first known isotopes, C carried out the first oxidation reaction, D developed the pH scale. Number 2. As you move from the left side of the periodic table to the right side, the elements become A solid in state, B liquid, C more conductive, less metallic. Number 3. Ashton noticed that copper, zinc, and gallium are in the same horizontal row in the periodic table. She concluded that these three elements belong to the same A family, B period, C group, D sections. You may take a look on your periodic table. Number 4. Nonmetals like to blank electrons to become blank ions. A. Lose negative. B. Lose positive. C. Gain negative. D. Gain positive. carefully in the choices. Number five. The most useful source of chemical information about the elements is A. A. Calculator. B. Table of metric equivalents. C. Table of isotopes. D. Periodic table. Alright, let us have the answers. For the matchy matchy, number one is letter B, number two is A, number three is E, four is C, five is letter D. For the next part, we have number one, letter A, Dimitri Ivanovich Mendeleev created the periodic table. Number two, as you move from the left side of the periodic table to the right side, the elements become letter D, less metallic. Number three, you have letter B. Number four, it's letter C. And number five, it's letter D. Thank you for watching this video lesson. For more updates, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Come on.